Welcome, Drink with James, episode 80, last episode of the year. I started to wear my four card varsity, uh, which I don't think I've ever worn in the video before, which is not many outfits that I haven't worn yet. I'm, I'm running low on outfits. Um, so if anyone out there wants to be the clothes sponsor for Drink With James, let me know. Although by anyone, I mean Tom Brown, Suit Supply, or Baji. Those are probably the only three brands that I would accept. So if any of you guys are watching, let me know. Um, but moving on from that, laps, last episode of the year, how many did we do this year? Do you know? Uh, I think 40, I think this would be a 48. 48 episodes for the year. Look, this has been a big year. Uh, big year for influencer marketing, big year for, for four card, hopefully a big year for y'all. Uh, I hope that you've been sitting around thinking about what you want to do next year, thinking about your goals. Um, but it's an exciting time to be in this space. Uh, I think that really this year was, was a big shift in just that you stopped having to justify yourself. You know, you stopped having to, to talk about why influencers were important. Um, and there's always the naysayers and there's always the people who are going to say it's a bubble or it's going to go away or is it real. Um, but I hear that talk less and less. And it's, you know, it's a big honor to run this company and to be a part of y'all's journey. And, and we get notes and, and, and booze and chocolates and emails all the time. And people are saying, you know, how much Four Card has helped them, how much it's helped them grow, how it helped them get their first brand collaboration, or that Drink With James has been helpful, or that they love the people who work at Four Card. Uh, and you know, this, it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty cool thing. And, uh, and being a part of the things that y'all do every day is, is, is an honor that I, I think every person who works here takes quite seriously. And, and I thank you for being a part of the platform, for doing what you do. And I wish you only the best next year. Personal highlights, you know, um, I got to do more private aviation travel, which was great for me. Um, so that was nice. I changed my hairstyle, I grew a mustache. The, getting the Stetson is probably a big, you know, that's a big highlight of the year for me. I started an art gallery in my apartment um, for some reason. I thought maybe I didn't have enough to do. Um, so yeah, I have an art gallery in my apartment called Patio, um, and we do shows, you know, maybe every two months. Um, so we just had an opening last night, it was really fun. Uh, and uh, I had like 60 people in my tiny tenement apartment. Um, which is actually just a funny side note, and I don't know if we'll put this into the video, but it's, it's interesting to, you know, to run this company and, and to see all these influencers moving into these palatial apartments while I continue to live in a dingy tenement in the Lower East Side. Um, but you know what? I'm happy for you guys. Your, your 2,000 square foot airy loft in Soho looks awesome, and I'm glad to have contributed in that in any way that I can. Okay, let's move to questions. Um, will blogs be dead? Will YouTube triumph? Um, what's going on next year? What's the big shift? Big shift next year. I don't know. Spoiler alert. I don't know. I have some ideas. Um, I think one very real thing, no, it's not even a possibility, this is just happening. There is more money coming into the space. That's awesome for everybody, right? What that also means is there's more competition, there's more choice, there's more options for brands. I think in general you're seeing a lot of influencers who have been in the space for a long time. Um, you know, I think you will start to, it will start to get harder and harder to close deals because brands have the ability to choose from so many people. That's great if you're on the up and up. You know, I think there's always the question of, is it too late to try? Is it too late to start? Is it too late to try and do this? Uh, I don't think it is. Brands are constantly looking for new influencers to work with. Um, we have 33,000 on our platform. We started five years ago with, with 800. Um, so just thinking about the amount of choice out there um, is huge. And I think that it will get harder and harder to book deals. And I've heard, you know, I've sat with influencers who have big followings who, who have done you know, a, a lot of brand partnerships who are having a harder and harder time getting deals. Um, and it's not because their content has gotten worse, it's not because they have a bad follower health score, it's just that there's so much choice out there. And as a brand, you don't necessarily have to 
work with the same person over and over again. You can work with a hundred different people in a month uh, if you are so inclined. And so I think as it gets harder to book deals because there's more influencers, it will become more important for influencers to distinguish themselves in some way, set themselves apart, differentiate from your competitors. I hope that's a trend. I hope that we see more differentiation. I hope that we see influencers trying harder and doing more and less just general group think. You know, it's, 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 I, again, we get hundreds of signups every week to four card. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate between the accounts. Um, there's a certain like influencer look and feel um, that, it, that a, a large portion of the market has. And I just, I just don't think that that's really gonna be sustainable. Again, look at, you know, look at other media outlets, look at magazines, you know, and remember when there was Teen Vogue and, and, and you know, I don't, you know, I mean, there was thousands of magazines, right? And they were all very, very similar, just slightly, just slightly different. Um, and then most of them shut down, you know? Um, the ones that weren't specifically differentiated and weren't doing their own thing in their own way, they don't survive. And so uh, I think that will be a, a trend. I don't know if that'll happen this year, actually. I don't, I don't think it will, that we'll have like the reckoning. Um, but it's coming, you know. I'm not saying there's a bubble that's gonna burst. I'm just saying that at some point c competition will get high enough that just looking like everybody else isn't, isn't gonna cut it. So find your voice, be weird, be different, put yourself out there, don't try and be like everyone else. Don't just take pictures of you holding a fucking croissant on the Brooklyn Bridge because you know it's gonna get a lot of likes. That isn't interesting. Let's all move away from that. Two. So what do you do? You have a good blog stats. So the question is someone who's got about 100,000 views on their blog every month, only 2,000 Instagram followers. What do you do? How do you fix this? Great question. Honestly, unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for it. Uh, I, have, I have seen this problem personally. I had a friend who had great blog traffic, had a hard time driving that traffic to their Instagram. In their case, you know, their blog was more writing focused and it was, it was focused on articles and that just didn't translate to Instagram that well. Um, they played around with a lot of stuff and find, you know, eventually found something that worked. I think the thing was that initially they were trying to take what they did on the blog, writing articles, focusing on other things, and they tried to make that work on the Instagram, but it didn't. Um, Instead, they kind of had to focus that Instagram on themselves. You know, you, you do have to work within what works in the platform. So if you have been, you've obviously gotten some success, 100,000 visitors a month to your blog is not, you know, is, is something to be proud of. That's, that's a lot of people coming to your, to your site every month. If you only have 2,000 Instagram followers, it, it means you're not, you, you know, what you're doing on Instagram isn't working. Um, and you should try something different. So I don't, without, you know, I didn't look at the account that much and I don't want to make this just about the person who's asking the question, but I will say, if you're having trouble getting people to move from one platform to another, it might be that you're just not doing the right things on that platform um, because you should be able to take those 100,000 people and get them to want to follow your Instagram. Um, some reason they're not trying new things. We always talk about this, you know, this whole year, I think we've talked a lot about experimenting. Don't be too precious with your Instagram, try new things, look at the data, see what works, see what doesn't work, it's the only way you're gonna learn, so try something new. Your Instagram is your marketing page for the rest of your kind of profile online. So if you have 100,000 visits to your blog, but 2,000 Instagram followers, people are gonna look, find your Instagram, and they're gonna say, 2,000 followers, this person must not get any traffic, because if they got traffic, they would have more followers. Um, so really try and focus on it, get that number up. Um, it's important for that reason alone. Um, so. What are your thoughts on net neutrality? Uh, I mean, I, you know, net neutrality being repealed is a horror show. And I was actually thinking with Tim, I, I was thinking we should have sent something out 
earlier to try and get more influencers to talk about it because, you know, essentially, you know, what, what can happen now is that, you know, your internet provider can charge you $50 a month and then they can charge you $2 a month to use YouTube and $5 a month to use Netflix and $3 a month to do, use WhatsApp and $2 a month to use Instagram. And so the way that it can hurt influencers is that, you know, they could make it so that accessing your social sites is more expensive and that everybody who has the internet doesn't get to go to YouTube. Um, look, it's, it's complete bullshit. Um, and it's a complete horror show. Again, like you think about, I think Verizon was pushing this really hard. They, they wanted to repeal it. And I believe Microsoft owns Verizon or they have some, some sort of, you know, uh, partnership. So if you are a Verizon customer now, let's say, okay, your phone is Verizon, they could make it impossible for you to use Google on your phone because Microsoft has a deal with Verizon and they could make you use Bing and it could be literally impossible for you to use Google or you would have to pay $5 a month to use Google. Like, that's a crazy thought and it, it brings up, a, you know, I think I went on a rant earlier in the year about the election and influencers. It, it brings up the, a point of just what's the point of having influencer influence if you're only using it to fucking sell foundation and lipstick or, you know, high heels or fucking sneakers or cars or whatever it is. Uh, this is another perfect example of an issue that affects everybody um, that I think a lot of the like nerd internet was very riled up about. Um, like if you're on Twitter and you follow developers and, and entrepreneurs and things like that, there was a lot of, of outrage about it and a lot of people talking about it. I don't think I saw a single influencer posting about net neutrality. Um, again, at Forecard, we, we should have made an Insta story or something for people to post, but get involved in this stuff. You know, I think if, if 2017 has taught us anything, it's the time of sitting back and doing nothing has passed. And I think all the influencers who didn't post about the election, who, who then, who said, again, I don't want to upset my Republican followers, so I'm not gonna say vote for Hillary, or I'm not gonna talk about Trump. Probably, I hope, regretted that decision. Um, and I think all of you, if you do, if you're lucky enough to have a voice and a following and people who are listening to you, feel free to reach outside of your comfort zone and, and talk about things that you believe in and that you're passionate about. And will there be blowback? Absolutely, you know? I mean, people will be pissed off, but again, what the fuck, who cares? Like, the, if you have this following, you should be using it to try and enact some kind of change. And net neutrality is a great example of something that 80% of Americans don't want and got passed through because, you know, Trump's got a bunch of corporate lackeys that are at the FCC and, and somehow they pushed through this piece of shit that nobody wants. Um, and now, you know, we're all gonna potentially be quite negatively affected by it. And, and just, you know, when, if in a year, your internet is $10 more expensive because you have to pay to access Netflix, think about that and think about like what we could have done to try and get people to call their congressmen, to try and do something, um, enact some sort of change. The four card community reaches 1.5 billion people every month. How many people are there in the US? I don't even know. 300 million? Yeah. 300 million people in the US, 1.5 billion people total the four card community reaches. Like, you guys do have the power to, to shift the way the country potentially thinks about things. Um, and I hope next year, we harness that power more and we use it. So, midterms. I expect all of you to be posting, unless you're Republican, in which case, don't post anything. Just continue not sharing your views, please. Um, I mean that in the nicest way possible. It's just that we have a sociopath that runs the country, and I think that it would be better if we had a Democratic Congress and Senate. So, if we could just do that, after this, we'll get rid of Trump. You guys can post all you want. I grew up in a Republican household that's not Republican anymore. So if we can get back to like 1988 Republicanism and conservatives in the U.S., I'm totally down with that. I'm not going to be a Republican, but like you can talk about it. But anyway, long story short, happy 2018. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sending your questions. As always, please do send them through um, to myself or Tim. 
and we'll see you guys next year.